Hey guys, welcome back. Today I want to talk about a handgun you've seen here on the channel before, which is the PO8 9mm Luger. The thing is, I don't want to talk about this one. This one's just kind of a regular Luger. I'm sure you've seen them all over the place before. Let's talk about a different variation of the Luger that was very popular around the turn of the century, especially with the German military and the German artillery. This is a 1918 manufactured DWM PO8 Luger in 9mm that is an artillery Luger. This handgun was developed during the World War I. It seems that uh, during World War I, there was a lot of interest by both the commercial market and the military markets to use handguns both as pistols and as carbines. And this handgun was a result of that development. And when I say that, it's because I have the stock to go with it. This is an original stock. It is missing its leather furniture, its frog, and its holster. But the, this is an original wooden stock. And these pistols could be made into carbines simply by rotating this little lever here. If I can hit the right spot. There we go. And now this is a 9mm carbine. Okay, I know what you guys are going to ask me. Did you register that as an SBR? No, I don't have to. Lugers are exempt from the NFA laws. So if you have a Luger, you're going to find that almost all of them, if not all of them, are cut for a stock just like the artillery Luger. So I can put this stock on my little old PO8 Luger as well as my artillery Luger. So let's do a little bit of shooting with this guy, have some fun with it today. Take a look at the history of the handgun. This is one of my favorite military handguns of all time, the PO8 Luger. I'll talk a little bit about that and why I like it so much. But right now, I just kind of want to shoot this old girl. I am shooting some Fiocchi 124 grain ball. And this is also courtesy of the guys over at Freedom Munitions. They also sell Fiocchi ammunition. I'm using this instead of the standard 124 grain ball offered by Freedom because this is hotter. The Luger is designed to use very hot 9mm ammunition, so if you're using more of a commercial load, it's not going to work so well. Target loads and commercial loads aren't going to work nearly as well as a, a hot 9mm. I know you guys have contested some of you in the past when I talk about how warm the Fiocchi stuff is. It's warm. That's why this Luger likes it. I'm going to insert its 8 round magazine, pull the toggle to the rear, chamber that first round, make sure she's on fire, and now let's go ahead and shoot my Luger carbine. Ah, didn't lock open. These magazines are old. Might as well talk about that as well. This handgun is an all numbers matching artillery Luger. That means the serial number is covering this gun and all numbers match right down to the magazine. It has a serial number on the floor plate that matches the gun. This is a highly desirable Luger. Now, one other thing I want to show you this afternoon is that Metgar makes new Luger magazines. And if you don't want to replace the spring in your original Luger magazine, you can use these Metgar magazines. They're for sale on Brownells for around uh, just less than 30 bucks. But you'll notice it has the same facilities with a loading thumb piece, and it holds eight rounds, just like the original Luger. So if you want to take your gun out and shoot it, you don't want to take your original war production springs out of your magazine, you want to leave it all original, go ahead and pick up one of these Metgar mags from Brownells, take your pistol out, and shoot it. Okay, I think I got eight rounds loaded. Let's go ahead, put that Metgar magazine in there, charge my Luger, and go back to shooting steel plates. Look at that, guys. The bolt locks to the rear. That little toggle stays to the rear, as it should. The original magazine, its springs are a little bit weak. I'm surprised it functions as well as it does. The wartime magazines didn't have a very good temper to them, and that the springs lost their springiness over time. So having a new production magazine like this makes shooting the guns that much more enjoyable. Okay, guys, let's uh, load up some more magazines, go out, do a little bit more shooting, and talk about the history of the Luger and my affinity for the partic this particular pistol.
All right, what we have over here is my Challenge Targets plate rack. I'm gonna use my Mechgar magazine so it locks open. I have its original magazine as well. When I load the pistol, I just take its single stack magazine. Now look at the, the angle and the grip angle of the pistol. It's an exaggerated grip angle, but it's very comfortable. Most people find the Luger to be extremely comfortable to shoot, but that really exaggerated angle is very hard uh, in terms of, of spring tension and pressure and friction to be made reliable. And that's why when the springs start to get weak, the handguns can start to have problems, which is nice that you have an alternative like these Mechgar newly manufactured magazines. I've had no problems with them at all in my Luger. All right, so I insert the magazine. The magazine release is right there, of course. You can drop it out by a press of a thumb. We call it an American release, but I don't know if it was invented in American or not, or America or not, but whatever. We call it an American style release. And charge the weapon. You'll see the round sitting in there ready to go. I'll just take the palm of my hand, pull the toggle to the rear and release it. And the weapon loads. Again, the fire control safety is right here. That's safe. Forward is fire. Now let's go ahead and see how well this handgun would perform in an IPSC competition. <laughs> or how well I would perform in an Ipsic competition with this particular handgun. I think the gun is probably more accurate than I am with it. Case in point. I'm shooting this thing high, guys. You can see I'm hitting towards the top of the target. And uh, yeah, so anyway, I got a couple of rounds left. I know there's one in the chamber. That's all I have is one in the chamber. Let's see if I can hit that little swinger there on the top. I think I center punched it. All right, so I still have one magazine left. Now this is its original magazine, and this one, it's not 100% reliable. Many times it won't even lock open. But with the Fiocchi ammunition, it seems to be feeding pretty well. Now look at the nose of the bullet, how it's sitting on that magazine. Everything about this to me screams unreliable. It's amazing how well the gun really does work, despite the fact that the magazine looks like it's holding the round with the bullet nose down just a little bit. Again, pull it to the rear and let it go. Chamber is just fine. Let's work that dueling tree a little bit here. Yeah, I'm definitely shooting high and left. Ah, didn't lock open. I think I may have even had a little bit of a flinch in there. So I'm shooting high and left. Typically when I'm flinching, I'm shooting low, but I'm shooting high with the pistol. So yeah, that's fun. I enjoy this little guy. YouTube has demonetized pretty much all gun channels, cutlery channels, airsoft channels, anything that they deem to be politically objectionable. And many of us are trying to find a way forward. It's expensive maintaining a YouTube channel that produces multiple videos a week. So we've turned to Patron. Many of us in the firearms community have turned to Patron. If you would like to support the Military Arms Channel going forward, there's a lot of great reasons to do so. For a couple bucks a month, you can get access to all sorts of great pricing on products from Copper Custom. You get behind the scenes information, photos, original blog posts, and we even do a couple of giveaways every year going forward where we'll bring a, a random patron subscriber out and let them shoot video with us and have a good time at Copper Custom and here on the Mac range. So please consider spending a few bucks and not just with the Military Arms Channel guys, seek out your favorite content creators, no matter what genre they, they create content in and support them on Patreon. YouTube really doesn't do much for us anymore, and if we want to continue moving forward, we all need your support. So thanks again, guys. I really appreciate it to our patrons out there. You guys rock. Let's field strip the artillery Luger. Now, disassembling this pistol is just like any other Luger on the market. The only difference is this one has a longer barrel, but the disassembly is the same. Now, you can go into much more detail in terms of stripping than what I'm gonna show you right now. I'm just gonna show you a basic field strip. All you need to do to clean and lubricate the pistol. All right, first of all, you gotta make sure that the weapon's empty. I have the magazine inserted into it. I'm gonna lock the bolt to the rear on the empty magazine. You can look down inside and you can see that the pistol is empty. Now I'm gonna drop the magazine out by hitting the magazine release right here by my thumb, drop the magazine out and set it aside. Now this is how I strip my Lugers. Some of you guys say, oh, don't do it that way, do it this way. All right, now with my toggle back and I can clearly see that the action's clear, there's a takedown lever right here. I'm just gonna rotate this lever down be careful because this side plate right here can pop off. And now with that lever down, you just lift up the front. See how I'm lifting the front of the side plate first and then pull it away. And that exposes the trigger and everything else. But now the two assemblies, the top assembly, the, the upper receiver and the lower receiver are gonna come apart. I'm gonna pull the toggle to the rear, release it, spring pressure, and now they just slide apart. That simple. You can set the lower receiver aside 
To take the toggle out, you have one big pin that runs through right here by my fingernail. Now I need to clip that fingernail, it's looking kind of grody. Sorry, I went camping, had to dig a fire pit. All right, so it's, it's smaller on this side, larger on this side, so naturally you're gonna wanna push the pin to your left. I'm gonna push it with the tip of my finger and I can get a hold of it with a fingernail. It's not very tightly fit. Now keep in mind it is under spring pressure. I'm gonna relieve a little bit of that by breaking the toggle action up. And now that pin pops out and you'll see the toggle spring pop down. Now you can just lift up a little bit on the toggle. You have to clear the toggle hump on the back of the slide frame there. On the frame, I guess it's not really a slide. And once it clears this little hump, you can just pull the bolt assembly out. Now this is as far as I typically take my Lugers apart. You can go ahead and pop another pin out right here take the bolt away from the toggle arm. You can turn the firing pin, push it in, turn it, and disassemble the firing pin channel if you want to and, and clean and lubricate in there if you'd like. But I don't typically get into that maybe once a year if I shoot them quite a bit and I don't shoot them all that often. So that's a basic field strip of the pistol. For a gun that was designed around the turn of the century, 1900, that's a fairly simple way to, to field strip the pistol. I've found guns, early turn of the century firearms that are much more complex in terms of stripping them down for field maintenance, putting it back together, takes a delicate hand, a little bit of paying attention here. There's a, a little channel right inside that you wanna make sure that you hit just right with the bolt. And I never seem to hit it just right. There we go. Now once it, hit, once, it hits, once it hits that little channel, go ahead and push it forward. Don't force it, guys. If it's not going, don't push harder. It should go in with very little to no force. All right, now I have the bolt home. Not quite, I have it broken over because I'm gonna lift the toggle up now. And I, when I lift up on the toggle, I'm gonna to push down on this arm, and what I'm trying to do is line this hole up here in the rear. Once I get it lined up, I can push the pin through. I'm not even looking, let's go ahead and look. Once everything's lined up, I can push that pin through. Once everything's lined up, I can push that pin through. <laughs> here we go. All right, now you can push your toggle down, and it's ready for putting it back on top of its lower receiver. Now, keep in mind this little arm right here, this little arm engages a spring, and this is how your toggle works. So I'm gonna hold this upward like this so this little toggle arm is dangling down. I'm gonna take my frame and there's rails that run the full length of the frame here on the low receiver. Set it in there and it'll slide right back. You see where this little arm is? And when it hits right there, I'm gonna push it down with my finger and just push it back. Everything else will line up automatically from there. Now you can just push back a little bit, pull back a little bit, on the toggle like this. Take your side plate and notice how I'm putting the rear end in first and pushing it down. I put it in, push it down, and then take the disassembly lever and put it back, rotate it up. I didn't get it all the way down. Looks all the way down, but it's not all the way down. Try it one more time. Ow! Put that little guy in there, and there we go. Okay. <laughs> and that's how simple it is. I'm not going to redo that because I want you guys to see that even I make mistakes all the time. <laughs> Go watch my SR1911 video if you don't believe me. I shot my recoil spring into the woods. All right, guys, that's how you field strip and reassemble the Luger. All right, guys, we're back at the 100-yard line. The lowest setting that you can set to the artillery Luger is 100 meters, which may explain why maybe it's shooting a little bit high for me at closer ranges. But... We have our challenge target down there at 100 yards, and I have my rear sight set to 100 meters. And let's just see if I can connect with that thing, see if it makes an effective carbine or not. I do not have my eyes on because it's kind of low light, it's getting ready to rain here, and I simply can't see the sights with my old eyes. So don't do what I'm about to do, always use eye protection. All right, here we go. That one hit. <laughs> that one hit. And I hit again. Guys, that was nine rounds, I think. I had one in the chamber. And, uh, oh, look at that. It's that Metgar magazine. It did this with my other Luger. It's, it's, I'm getting false locks on it with both handguns using that magazine. I have one round left. See if I can hit it. This should be nine rounds. Okay, <laughs> there, I think I hit it with nine rounds and it locked open. That's kind of weird, guys. This thing on that last round is giving me false locks. So maybe these Metgar magazines aren't the best things in the world. <sighs> oh. 
Oh, hey guys. I was feeling a little bit tired this afternoon, so I did a little bit of a pick-me-up with my Monster Pipeline juice. Anyway, here we are at 100 yards with my little uh, artillery sniper rifle here. Aside from a couple of wild shots, we took a few extra shots from back there at 100 yards. That's not too bad, man. <laughs> this little guy would do okay. We might have to take this out to the long range and see how far back we can actually connect with a man-sized target. At 100 yards, it's actually an effective little tool. Huh, that's pretty impressive. Trolling the trolls. <laughs> the two things that make the artillery Luger different than a standard PO8 Luger are the length of the barrel and the rear sight. Let's take a look at the two pistols side by side. Here we have a standard Luger. I'm gonna roll it over here so you can see where the toggle action is. Now right here is the back of the barrel. Where this comes into lockup, right there, that's where the rim of the case stops. So if we measure the barrel length on the standard Luger, you're gonna see that it's right about four inches to where it locks up. So you have about a four inch barrel on the standard Luger. If you take a look at the artillery Luger, again, keep in mind it locks up right here. We run the tape measure out to the end of the barrel and it's closer to eight inches in length, just a little shy of eight inches. So you have basically a barrel that's twice the length of a standard Luger. Now, if you look at the two side by side, you can see that the standard Luger has a rear sight right here at the back of the toggle and it moves every time the gun's fired. You can see when the toggle breaks loose, see how that rear sight pops up with the toggle. On the artillery Luger, you have a standard rifle type sight, just miniaturized. You can pinch right here, press a spring in and slide it up and you have markings all the way up to 800 meters, which again is quite optimistic for a handgun calibered carbine, especially one with an eight inch barrel. So that's really the only two differences between this handgun. They use the same magazines. Most of the internal parts are completely compatible, but keep in mind, if you're gonna shoot Lugers a lot, try to find one that has most of the serial numbers matching because a lot of these guns were hand fit at the factory. Yes, we had modern production occurring around the turn of the century, but these handguns were built by artisans. Many times, these, hand, these parts are all hand fit, and you can see the grind and file marks on many of the internal components, so they're fit to that particular gun. So if your Luger's not working right, you may need to take it to a gunsmith if all the numbers aren't matching on your military Luger and get some of those parts looked at because they may need a little bit of hand fitting. All right, so that's the major differences. Now I'm gonna go ahead. <laughs> put my eyes and ears on and shoot this artillery Luger. Now, one of the things that's interesting about this little pistol is that despite the fact that it has a rifle-like rear sight, the sight picture is very accommodating when you shoot it as a handgun, but it definitely is more accommodating when you shoot it as a carbine with a stock in place because that rear sight's further forward and the V-notch in it is more pronounced. It's a larger V-notch. So it definitely, definitely works better when you fire it as a carbine than the standard four inch barreled gun. Let's go ahead and load up eight more rounds of this Fiocchi 124 grain stuff. I'm using the Mekar magazine. Now to charge the Luger, it has a toggle action. And just like its, its smaller counterpart with the four inch barrel, the artillery Luger works on a delayed blowback system. So when this toggle starts to come up, that's the whole top part of the gun is actually moving rearward and then it hits this bump right here in the receiver. Watch when I push, I just check to make sure the chamber is empty. So I'm gonna put my hand on the muzzle as I push this upper assembly rearward, see how it moves? That distance that it moves gives the bullet enough time to get out of the barrel and now the recoil forces, uh, I'm trying to hit it hard enough. Recoil forces pop that toggle loose so now it's at a mechanical disadvantage where it's at a mechanical advantage when it's fully forward, it's pushing straight back. It can't be unlocked no matter how hard you push on it. When it finally hits that ramp in the rear and breaks that toggle up, now the recoil forces can continue that toggle's action moving rearward. It ejects straight out the top, straight up, and then it goes back home under spring pressure and chambers another round. It's a very interesting design and this is what kind of endears me to the handgun. Keep in mind around the turn of the century, Pretty much, we got smokeless powder pretty close to the turn of the century, just before it. And by the 1930s, just about every advancement or, or technological idea or advancement that could be made was made by the 1930s, by the end of the 1930s. The Luger is based on an earlier work or earlier design called the Brochart. 
and it competed against that pistol in a number of military trials, including the C-96 Mauser. The C-96 Mauser came around in 1896. The P-08 Luger became adopted in 1908. That's where you get many times military nomenclature. So this handgun, at least with the German military, it was, it was competing against that Brochart. It was competing against the C-96. And I think the Frommer was another pistol that they considered before the German military adopted the, the P-08 Luger in its various forms. It's also interesting to point out that this handgun, the artillery Luger, it is, uh, it, 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 it's, it's kind of one of those weird things in history where both the commercial marketplace and the military marketplace was trying to find a pistol that could act both as a pistol and a carbine. They wanted to be able to put a stock on it, shoot at distance, or they wanted to be able to just shoot it as a normal handgun. And this artillery Luger bridges that gap nicely. Despite the fact you would think it's unwieldy with that eight inch barrel, it's not. It points very nicely and actually shoots really, really well. You just pop your rear sight down, drop a magazine into the pistol, to charge it, you just pull the toggle up sharply and let it go, and now the weapon's ready to go. The safety is right here. You can tell when the safety is on because this little bar pops up. When the safety is off, that bar goes away. It's written safety and fire in German, uh, so you can just tell by that little bar, forwards fire, and the little pistol's ready to go. And again, those sights are very accommodating as a handgun, not just as a carbine. All right, guys, it's time to head out this afternoon. We've had some fun out here. Hope you enjoyed some range time with us shooting the Lugers, and in particular, my 1918 artillery Luger. I love this handgun. I just love the Luger in general. It's a great military pistol. It's very iconic. It's easily identifiable. It's very elegant and very practical for the most part. Keep in mind, this handgun is 100 years old in its design over 100 years old in its design. This one's 99 years old, and the other one's just over 100 uh, based on its manufacture date. But still, it's incredible to think these handguns 100 years later are still operational and letting shooters like myself have a good time with them. It's a testament to the design of the handgun. Fun, beautiful, and again, very, very elegant pistols. If you have a handgun that isn't working well for you, you can find spare parts for them. Numerich has parts for them. Wolf Spring Company makes springs for the gun, like the magazine springs, which you can swap out. So if the gun's not working, first of all, try the ammunition, change it up, don't use hollow points, get some nice hot 124 grain ball, like the Fiocchi, if that's not going to do it for you, try swapping out the magazine spring and then just start going through the springs of the handgun until you get it working. So generally speaking, you can get most any Luger functioning at 100% reliability if you have the right ammo and new springs in it. If you guys have any questions about anything you've seen in this video, post those questions down below. We do try to stick around for the first couple of days to answer any questions you guys may have. Also, I'm gonna ask you guys to join the NRA. I know I've been a staunch critic of the NRA in the past, but that's all changed. They're under new leadership with Pete Brownell at the helm, and we have a friendly White House, Senate, and House, and it's kind of a perfect storm, so to speak, and it's a great opportunity for us to come together with the NRA leading the charge to roll back some of these decronian gun laws that we live under and help to defend us from any future legislation that may come down the pipe. So please join the NRA. Use the link down below. That is a special link. Pass it around, share it, because that link brings me money, but I take that money and I give it to a 503 nonprofit called Hero Hunt that helps wounded warriors and first responders. So guys, it's a very worthy cause. I've gone into the field with them. They're outstanding people, and it's a great way to not only support the NRA and our gun rights, but to support a company that helps out our wounded warriors and first responders. And also, if you'd like to support us here at the channel, swing by, check out Copper Custom. It's our online store. It's coppercustom.com. Thanks again, guys, for all those years of support. And now it's time to fire my last magazine out of my little pistol and go home and clean it and put it away for a couple of years. Ah. Uh. Such a sweet shooting pistol. I would kiss it, but it's dirty. <laughs> Talk to you guys later.